Um, this is the pack that I keep for Max. And I thought I would weigh it. I have never weighed it. This is going to be in ounces. Seven ounces. So, for seven ounces, this is what you get. And initially, one of the reasons that I had to redo this was the original lock sack bag had a failure as well. Where is it? It's right there. Um, partially, this was my fault. Uh, for a long time, I had this pack uh, just to keep the size down. I had it rubber banded with these massive rubber bands. And for the most part, I have never really had to get into this pack. You know, knock on wood. Um, so essentially, it just gets beat up and passed around. You know, out camping, in the truck, dog bags, you name it. So, and this has been several years. So I don't, I don't blame a lock sack at all uh, for the wear. Now, when I reassemble this, I make sure everything's in there. There's one thing I took out, and I'll talk about that in a second, is we're going to try Doc's uh, reuse of the MRE bag. Um, I have tried this a couple times, and um, with my sealer, for some reason, uh, I sealed the same section multiple times, and it even almost held a vacuum. Uh, but the seal won't stay vacuum sealed, which is fine. I'm just going to use it as more as an abrasion resistance to keep the lock sack and everything else uh, from wearing as quickly, uh, since it just gets passed around and not used as well. Um, and the other neat thing was, even after I sealed it like four times, um, I don't know if you can see in there, I was still able to open it just like it was a stock MRE. So it was kind of interesting. I didn't have to cut the bag. So we're going to play around with that some more. All right. So in building this kit, uh, my intention was, slowly it's gotten smaller. I've traded certain items out of other first aid kits and other dog first aid kits and stuff that I've gotten. Um, it's a what it is now, and it may, once I break all this open today, I might discover that I've got something else um, that I need to put in here, and that's perfectly fine. But I've gotten it down to seven ounces, and there's also a lot of things in here that aren't just first aid. And where that comes from is Max is pretty much my main hiking partner. The days that I go out to shoot the videos that I do, um, it's usually just me and him. And for part of that is my schedule. And the other part is when I go out with other friends and family, they don't want to be on camera. And I respect that. So if you haven't seen a lot of outdoor videos, or if I mention in a video that I'm going out this weekend and then I get a, you know, a PM from somebody that says, how come you didn't film it? That's probably the reason why. Um, especially now that I have this waterproof camera, I really, I love taking it out when it's raining, all sorts of stuff, but not all my friends and family really want to be on camera. So a lot of that kind of gets edited out and there's no point in me putting up a 45 second clip of the parts that didn't have my friends and family in it. Uh, so that's one reason. Now with that, a long time ago on a, one of the forums, even one of the first videos I think I did of Max's pack, um going on a couple of years now I've been on YouTube uh, but was a story of a gentleman and his kids that became a real-life survival situation um, and I know I'm gonna get the story wrong because I'm trying to think of it right now had to do he got separated from his pack I believe crossing a river or it was just a day hike and they lost the keys to the truck maybe in the river Something happened, and he literally, they had to spend the night out there with extreme minimal gear and just what was within in their pockets. And one thing I've always done is Max always has a, you know, an extra copy of the key to the truck. Um, keys are something you don't normally think about when you go out of the woods, and even I have a bad habit of just throwing them in a pocket. And before I got the Maxpedition gear with the little key keeper thing on it, there was a lot of times I would try and remember, like, oh, crap. What pocket did I put those in? Did I put, put in the backpack? <laughs> you know, I get all the way back from the trailhead to the truck, and now i got to remember where I put the keys. i got to dig it through my pack and find my keys. So, uh, that's where this kit and the combination of all these things have come from. And again, I may tear into this, and I may find things that I now know I'm, I need. And partly it's because I haven't really had to get into this kit. The one thing I took out before the video 
was I have a card in there that has my name, address, phone number, emergency contacts for me, meaning friends and family either uh, nearby or even out of state that I've got in there. I have poison control phone number on there. There's a um, the vet that Max uses. I also have a 24-hour vet near the city. And then usually what I do is I don't always put it in this kit, but I always put it in my phone. If I'm going to a new area, and a lot of times when I go out, I go out to very similar areas, or the closest civilization is always going to be the same point, even if I'm going in different directions. So I have the vet or emergency vet numbers of that area. Now, if I'm going out of state or I'm traveling long distance, um, I will pick a couple different points in between and find emergency vets if I'm planning on an excursion. If it's just a roadside, you know, truck breakdown, I'm not really worried about it. But if I'm planning a hike, say, in Mount Hood and I live in Seattle, I'm going to know in the Mount Hood area in Sandy, Oregon, what the emergency vet number is. So that sort of narrows it down. Let's dive into this guy. Make sure I'm still on camera. I'm trying the zoom feature here, which I don't normally use on these guys. So, in this little package, I have thing of Gorilla Tape. I have a small thing of iodine. Betadine, sorry. Almost the same thing, but the uh, it's sort of wearing off. And some cotton balls. And one of the reasons behind that is uh, the dog's when you try and uh, you can't just put a cream on there because of all their hair and essentially that's where some of this first aid is going to come in cotton balls are a great thing when dealing with wounds on animals um, whether it's their paw or a scrape in their ears uh, it's just a whole lot easier to apply an ointment with cotton balls now this little baby pouch i have a little fire steel cut down matches, a striker, cotton swabs, and a couple more cotton balls. And again, this isn't all, all going to be first aid items. Here's a whistle. Uh, this little pouch is the paraffin wax covered cardboard along with some very bright kite string. Again, useful for cordage, two large safety pins, um, also used for marking the trail. That was came from a long time ago in some of my very earliest kits. If, you're, if you want to go back, I can't believe how poor the video quality is. But um, I have some leftover, uh, basically sleepy pills is what I wrote on there. But uh, they're for traveling uh, when your dog has anxiety. And Max doesn't really worry about traveling, but he just won't settle down. He won't ever lay down. And um, so I give him those so he'll lay down and be a little bit calmer otherwise he'll eight hour trip he'll spend it with his head hanging over the side of the thing and he'll never sit down in the truck uh, i have a wet fire cube here's my uh vet wrap and basically what i do is i push out the inside cardboard and let's unwrap a little bit here and you can see it's basically kind of like when you do the flattened duct tape and then all i do is do a quick twist since it's self grabbing and twist 90 degree perpendicular to the roll and it stays nice and flat there's no reason to carry a big roll um, have a lighter don't always carry a lighter this one has been in this pack I don't know how long uh, six years at least I was a friend of mine got me this lighter at a gas station he went on a trip that I couldn't go on and he said he's like hey got your present I'm like, what? It's a walleye lighter. <laughs> um, these are just gauze pads, and I press the air out of this little package here. Put that up there. Um, all my little ointments, benzoin, uh, chloride towelettes. Um, this is triple antibiotic. There's also a bug one. I have water purification. Let's just see what else is in here. Benzoin, triple antibiotics, hydrodone cream, which is great because dogs get into all sorts of stuff and they'll they'll get a rash from something. Uh, sting relief, 
uh, mosquitoes or bees because they're always getting in this is just soap toilet more water purification then here's the striker um, for the mini ferro rod this next one was an advice I got and these are um, just sleeves for the thermometer and it is a rectal thermometer uh, it's digital I left it in its hard case this was an advice I got from a friend of mine that works with dogs in hunting scenarios and in whether it's cold climate and you know your dog loves lake water so much and he's sitting there shivering um, it's an easy way to check the dog's temperature um, my buddy who does the hunting dogs he does it to check to make sure in the hot summer that he's not overworking the dogs dogs can get heat stroke just as easily they can get dehydrated just as easily and um, so that's essentially it's important to know what your temperature is of your dog and um, whether it goes up or down now this I might replace this was the uh, original uh, little tick tweezers uh, that came in a kit a long time ago that I used for Max here so that may be something I'm changing because there are some better options out there um, got a big thing of roll gauze these are um, uh, Benadryl allergy medicine uh, the one thing that's in here that I should re-up is for his knee um, I used to keep some uh, basically anti-inflammatory uh, drug in here and then I have some CR123s and this is usually because I usually have a flashlight or also my stereo pen is 123s so I usually have 123s hiding in just about every kit I have um, this is just a uh, straight razor 